How do you take a screenshot of part of the screen in your native script applications and then display that as an image? That's what I'm going to show you how to do in today's native script tutorial. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex from nativescripting.com where we have native script advanced video courses. You can check out the links down below if you don't know about those yet. And if this is your first time here, click on the subscribe button and click the little notification bell so you don't miss any of the native script tips, tricks and tutorials that we do here. Today I've got a fun tutorial for you. We're going to use native APIs on both iOS and Android to take a screenshot of part of the UI. This can be the full screen or this can be individual views. You can apply this technique to layouts, views, buttons, labels, images that already exist. You can take that information, take a screenshot of that part and then convert that to an image that you can display in the same application. This is pretty useful if you want to freeze your screen at a certain part or even save screenshots and save them to the file system or send them to the server. Really fun technique. Here it is. All right, here's where we're going to start out. This is basically the hello world template with one exception. There is still the tab button here, but instead of the label down here that does the counting, I put an image there. So it's a nice little beach image. Right here we have it in our project under images, image.jpg, and you can see the image here in the markup, the sources, tilde slash images slash image.jpg. That's why it's showing up there. Now we still have the stack layout and the label and the button here. Here is the on tab handler. Now notice when you first install the hello world template, we're gonna have a data binding here but uh, I don't want that. So I'm going to remove the data binding. And the reason is that I want to handle this tap event in the code behind. So there's main page.ts. I'm going to export a function called on tap. That's going to get some parameters of type event data. And of course, args.object is that button that we tap on. I'm going to just cast it as a view here. We need to import view. And I'm going to store this in the view constant. So that's going to be a view and that's the button itself. Notice the view gets imported up here automatically by Visual Studio Code. Now we need the view reference because we want to get a hold of the page that the view is on. Each view that lives on a page has a reference to the parent page. You can see right there, there's the page. We can use the page for several things. What we're going to use it here for is this function called get view by ID. It has this function so you can get any view on a page by its ID. Right now we have a bunch of different views here. We want to grab a couple of them. The first thing we want to grab is the grid layout that we're going to put here surrounding everything. So I'm putting in a grid layout to wrap the stack layout. The stack layout is going to continue to have our button and label and image. This is going to be essentially what we're going to be taking a screenshot of. By the way, it's not really a screenshot. It's a shot of whatever view you want. We can take a shot of the button. We can take a shot of the label or the image. So we're going to be copying those pixels and if you make it to the size of the screen, then you're copying the whole screen. But we're going to be basically assigning this grid layout, the ID of layout, and then we're going to be referencing whatever is in here. We're going to take a screenshot of that. So this is what we want to grab by ID layout. So I'm going to pass in layout right here. Layout is also a view. So I'm going to cast this as a view and I'm going to store this in a constant called target view. In other words, this is the view that we want to take a screenshot of. We're going to have a separate function here called get image and I want to have it return the screenshot. I'm going to call a function called get image. It's not there yet. I'm going to define it and pass in the target view to take the screenshot of. So let's create this function called get image. It's going to take in a view with type view. Uh, one more thing I want to mention is the reason I wrapped this in a grid layout is so that I can overlay an image on top of the stack layout easily. So we'll have the stack layout visible and we'll also have another image here that's actually going to get the final render of the screenshot. We want to be able to see the screenshot. You can still take a screenshot and save it to the file system. I'm not going to do that here, but it's more fun if you just display that image. So I'm going to give this image an ID of IMG. I'm going to stretch it out to do an aspect fill. Basically, this will keep the same aspect ratio. And initially, I want this hidden. So I'm going to set the visibility to collapsed. And what that means is that whether I'm on iOS or Android, if this image is collapsed, even if I click on the image, 
my clicks will go through it, my taps will go through it, and it'll tap on whatever is underneath the image, which in our case, the image is gonna be on top of the stack layout since it comes later in the grid layout and we're not assigning any rows or columns to this image. Therefore, both the stack layout and this image will be in row zero, column zero of the grid layout. And that's why the image will overlap on top of the stack layout. And that's why if you set the visibility to collapsed, we won't actually see the image and any taps that we do will interact with whatever is here, which will be the button in our case. Phew. Okay, hopefully that's clear. So even if I save this right now, and we take a look, it'll still look exactly the same as it did before. We can interact with that button right there and tap on it. And uh, there is an image overlaid on top of this, but we don't see anything because its visibility is collapsed. Now let's head back over here and play around with this get image function. This is the key, right? This is what's going to do our logic to get a hold of that screenshot. And it's going to be different in iOS and Android because we're using native calls here. So we're gonna write JavaScript code, which is one of the amazing things about native script. We're gonna write JavaScript code, but we're gonna talk directly to the native APIs. So if the, our view has the iOS property, if that's not undefined, that means we're running on iOS. So our iOS logic here, and otherwise, if we say view.android, that means we're running on Android. So we're gonna have our Android logic here. And if it's neither, then we're just gonna return undefined. Now, native script can run on other things other than iOS and Android, but we don't typically do that. So we're not gonna handle that case. Now, how do we get to write the iOS logic here? Well, you've seen my videos here before where we use native iOS calls. Dave has a couple of videos where he does really cool things here with iOS calls. And I, I'm using a little package here called TNS platform declarations. It's just a package available on NPM. You can download it. You can install it as a dev dependency in your project. And what this will give you is basically native types for iOS and Android. You can see my video where I show you all the details about how to install that and how to set that up. So we can use native types here. And the native type we want to use here is UI graphics begin image context with options. Since it's iOS, the name has to be really long. You can see the IntelliSense pop up with all the different native calls here for iOS types. There's the one we want. And if I open up the parens, you can see even the parameters that it expects. We want to get view.ios.frame.size for that first parameter. The second parameter is opaque, that's false. And the third parameter is scale, we're going to pass zero there. Now, mind you, I did not come up with this code. This code is something I googled for. So you can easily find examples like this on the internet for things that you're trying to do with uh, the native APIs and bring them over to native script. So I'm not going to explain everything here. But what I will do is paste in the code that we need. And then you can copy it if you need it. So I'm going to paste in the rest of the code. And we'll go through it real quick here. These are all native calls view.ios.draw view hierarchy in rect after screen updates. We pass in a rectangle with the height and width of that frame. Then we get the image from the current context and then we terminate the context. And then here we're actually using native scripts from data function. So we need to import that. I'm going to go up here to the top and this actually comes with the native script core modules. I'm going to say import something or other from TNS core modules. And that's coming from the image source module. All right, that's from data. So you can see all these different from asset from base 64 from data from file, and so on. So all these are helper functions that'll create a new image source, they're factory functions from some other type of data. So if you're converting a base 64 to an image, you can use this function, we're going from data. So I'm going to use that. And I'm also going to import the image source class itself. There we go. That's coming from the same module. Let's go back down here. And there we go. So we call from data and we pass in the image PNG representation. And we pass in the context. These are all native calls also. So this will return to us the data, the binary data and from data will actually convert it to our own native script type, which is the image source. Very cool. So that's the iOS side. I'm going to handle the Android side in just a little bit. I'm going to save this and let's take a look. I'm going to bring up iOS and I'm going to hit tap. 
Okay, so we hit tap and it created the image source, but we're not actually doing anything with it, right? So let's go back here. So that means we have the screenshot and our application is not crashing. So that's great. Now we need to get a hold of the image. Remember, I gave this image an ID of IMG. So let's use the same method here get view by ID from the page. And we're going to get a hold of the image. So I'm going to say const IMG equals view dot page dot get view by ID, pass in IMG. And this one is also a view. But in our case, I want to use some specific functions that are related to the image. And I'm going to be more specific with my cast here. So I'm going to cast this as an image itself. Okay, and image is coming from native script. So I'm going to need to import that import image. And that's coming from TNS core modules UI slash image. All right, so we got the image. Now that we have the image, I could say image dot image source equals screenshot because get image returns to us an image source. Now we can just set our images image source to screenshot and it will show our image, but it won't show it yet because our visibility is set to collapsed. So we need to say IMG dot visibility equals and then we have a couple of choices here collapse hidden or visible. I'm going to say visible. All right, let's check this out on iOS. I'm going to hit tab here and there we go. So our image is shifted a little bit. You'll probably need to play around a little bit with the margins and the padding. But you can see that we have now the original UI and then the screenshot of it on top. So um, I want to make this movable. So I want to be able to just drag the image just to see that it's different. I'm just going to quickly apply a little gesture here and I'm going to apply the pan gesture on pan will be the handler. Pretty easy stuff. So let's go back here to the code and say export function on pan and we get some parameters here. And this is of type pan gesture event data. So I'm going to need to go up here and import that. That's coming from TNS core modules UI gestures. All right. So all our gesture event parameters are here. As you can see, there they all are. There's swipe, pinch, rotate, touch. The one we want is called pan gesture event data. There it is. So here we're going to get a hold of the view that we're actually panning. I'm going to use the same logic as here. I write that line a lot. As you might know, if you see my previous tutorials here, you always want to get a hold of that view. And then I want to say if args. So pan gesture event data has all these different options on the args. One of them is the state. So it's the current state of, of the pan. When you start the pan, it has one state. When you finish the pan, it has another state. And what we want to do is gesture state types dot changed. That's the one we want. And I'm just going to say view dot translate x equals args dot delta x and view dot translate y equals args dot delta y. That's really all you need to do in order to move that uh, to be able to drag that image. So I'm going to say tap here, it's going to make the image appear and then I'm able to grab it and just drag it around like that. So just to prove to you that it's actually working. Now I did promise you that I'll handle the Android side as well. And that logic is going to go right here. Same as before, we're able to use the native calls directly to the Android system. And that's view dot Android. And the first call is set drawing cache enabled. We're going to go ahead and set that to true. It's kind of like the context with iOS, but now they just call it drawing cache. When we're done with this, we just call set drawing cache enabled and we're going to pass in false. So we turn it on and then turn it off. And in the meantime, in the middle, we're going to create a bitmap. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in here as well. So here we're using Android graphics bitmap and then create bitmap. And then we're passing in the view and then we get the drawing cache of the view. Save that as a BMP variable here. Then we generate a new image source. So const source equals new image source, which is going to construct an empty one here. And then we're going to say source dot set native source. We're going to pass BMP in there, the bitmap. And of course, let's return that source when we're done. That's it. That's all there is for the Android implementation. All right, so let's check this out. Let's head over to Android emulator and I'm going to hit tap. And you'll notice that the screenshot was taken while the tap button had a ripple effect going on in it. So it's a little bit darker. 
So there you go. Now it's actually working as well. And it's the same effect. We can actually drag this one as well. And there's the screenshot. Now, of course, this is not limited to what I assigned the image to, which is taking a screenshot of this whole grid layout. We can take a screenshot of pretty much any view. So I can drag this ID that we're targeting down to the stack layout and take a screenshot of the stack layout if we want to. So I'm going to hit tab here. The stack layout happens to contain all the same exact components, so that's going to be the same. But what if I drag the ID to, let's say, just the image, that nice looking beach? Let's take a look at that. I'm going to tap here and there we go. It took a screenshot of the image and because we are using the aspect fill as our image stretch value, it's filling up the whole screen. Let's try this on Android. It should get the same result. Yes. And there we go. That's all I got for you today. Have fun with screenshots, folks, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.